Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu show. And today I'm so happy to have my dear friend Lisa Fair with me.、Mm-hmm. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> This is exciting. Yes. Yeah, Lisa. I, you know, and I have been just living in community for for a long time and had a lot of collaborations. And also, Lisa has left the community and come back, you know, in and out over the. The last, I would say, twenty years,、um, back and forth. So now it's what we really seeing is that you know every single day is dropping in or is unfolding as an answer to a very very deep prayer, very very deep prayer to. To forgive、mm. whatever that we're still holding on as a block to to know God and to be happy. So even with Lisa, I know that even when you first picked up the course, it was such a mystical、um, experience because what I heard was that. You have gone through so much in life, and then you reached a point that you you were like everything was so meaningless, and you were considering killing yourself、mm. at home. And then when you when you were about to do that, then there was something happened. You you saw some light、mm. and a voice.、Mm. And that light was like a bubble showing up in your in your living room and telling you, Lisa, truly believe, truly believe, and truly fly. Right. Yeah, it was actually in my bedroom, and yeah, it was just like I. It was in such a state of hopelessness, and you know, I was a single mom with two children and. Just, just trying to make it every single day to try to, you know, play the role and yeah, and just really, I had actually no belief in God then. I'd given all my belief to the world and and to relationships and everything that it was like I, I checked under every rock of the world. To find out where the answer was, even drugs, alcohol, sex—you name it—I was, I was、uh, taking it all to the max. And then,、um, yeah, just this complete emptiness. And when you know, I went to kill myself. I thought, well, I didn't believe in God. There were these、uh, Mennonite people that were coming to see me. On a weekly basis, because they were coming to pray with me, and I, you know, I used to actually look at them in amazement at how much faith that they had, and I just thought, wow, that's interesting that they have faith in God like that. But I never did. I just thought it was like just, yeah, they like they couldn't relate to me. You know, they never had the life that I had. But anyhow, in this experience of me wanting to kill myself, I was just so desperate, and I said. You know, if there is a God in heaven, you better save me now because I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. Like this is over for me. Yeah, and I don't know what happened. I don't. It was like time had stopped, and this light came in my room, and it it just totally encompassed me, and it just totally like locked me into it. And then there were sparks coming out of this light, and it started to speak. And it even sounded, if I have to remember, actually, it sounded like my own voice.、Hmm. It wasn't even like it was like my voice, Lisa, Lisa. 
you got to believe, Lisa, Lisa. And it was just locked into this thing. Truly believe, truly fly, truly believe, truly fly. And it was like, you got to believe, Lisa, you got to believe. And, you know, I don't even know how long it lasts, actually. But it was like, all of a sudden, it just stopped. And I realized, oh, my God, I never believed in God. <laughs> like, it was like my last hope. Because I, I could feel that before that, I had no belief left. There was nothing left for me to believe in. Like, to go towards, or to look for help, or safety, or family, or anything. And then, then uh, I kept, got out of my room, and I was always into the self, trying to get out of my depression. And then went downstairs to my living room, and the Bible was laying there, and I picked it up, I'm like, ah, uh, this isn't going to work, God. Like, you know, and then... I looked over on my bookshelf, and there was A Course in Miracles. And it was like it was sparkling. Hmm. Oh, it was so beautiful. It was just like, oh, my God. And I ran over to it. And, you know, I, I opened it up. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I always say it's like uh, all these birds just started chirping. <laughs> And it's funny because I'm here now and that's just all that's happening. But like it totally just encompassed my whole mind. Mm. Mm. And, you know, nothing, I guess, you know, the most, the thing that was so brilliant about it was, is that no one ever told me to look at my thoughts, mm -hmm. that, that it was my thoughts alone that were causing me pain. And when I started to look at my thoughts, all of my thoughts were like full, my mind was full of fear and guilt and shame and anger and rage and unworthiness and deep unworthiness and so much guilt. Oh, I had so much guilt because, yeah, it was like my world was, yeah, you know, what I see now, it was like a mind of a victim. Mm. My mind, I was identified mm. with being a victim. Mm. And my world... <laughs> It was like I couldn't get out of this nightmare. Mm -hmm. You know, and no medication. I tried psychiatry. I tried everything. Mm -hmm. Nothing could stop this victim identity. Mm -hmm. And so what was a miracle? Yeah, it was a total miracle that, like, like I could heal my mind. And realizing that my world was reflecting my mind. That it was an outpicturing of an inner condition. Yeah. Yeah, because you you told me that the moment you you got out of that um, suicidal state mm. and with that encounter with the light, and then the course, there was a immediate shift of perception. Like suddenly you realized, um, even just a very tangible in a very tangible way, you look around your house, you saw, oh my God, I'm living in the most beautiful area. Mm. People used to tell you that, but you never, you never saw. You just saw yourself as living in a victim. Mm. Everything, and then you started to see the house as a mess. And you, well, that was actually very mystical for me because what I was doing, well, it did, it did it to me. I felt like when I was going into these mystical experiences and looking at my mind and forgiving, you know, I, you know, forgiving the thoughts and. Truly, it was about developing the relationship with the Holy Spirit that I had a helper. I, I was so grateful I had a helper. I just needed to start utilizing that gift of the Holy Spirit and developing my relationship with God and starting to forgive, you know, the past and seeing it was all in my mind. And I guess what the big miracle was you know, where I would go into these mystical experiences. And, you know, there was all kinds of terrible drama, like murders and, you know, rapes. And it was just like this big cycle that was in my mind, you know. And and it was really unbelievable. And I would go into these deep, beautiful experiences where I would open my mind to experience my one real relationship, which was with God that it was a possibility that this 
relationship, you know, to feel my innocence, actually. Mm -hmm. That the deeper that I opened to this innocence, that it was opening up to God, my true identity. And as I was opening up to that, you know, all the thoughts would come in, you know, of the past, you know, ideas or thoughts, the wrongs I did or the wrongs I had seen and this willingness to let them go and drop deeper into this experience. And this one time, you know, this was probably maybe about two months into the course, I came out of this mystical experience. I don't even know how long I was in there. And all of a sudden I came out and I saw my backyard for the first time. And I was like, I never saw it before. I mean, and and like just what you were saying, people would come into my house and they'd say, oh my God, you got the most beautiful view out there. And, you know, I would just grab them and say, come on, let's talk about my problems. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about me and my problems. Let's talk about me and my story. Like I didn't even, it was like almost like I just wasn't, I didn't even see anything around me. I was just so self-consumed in my mind. And so I lived there for 13 years and I looked out at my backyard and I, I was like, what is going on? It was the most beautiful thing that I had ever seen in my whole life. I was overwhelmed. I mean, it just took me. And it was like these birds and these butterflies and this beautiful meadow with this Amish farm. And I just, I, I, I was like dumbfounded. And I walked to the edge of my property there and just was, and the sun was setting. And I was like, oh my God. God, I never saw this. And then, then I turned around and I looked at my house, you know, and I was like in shock because there was trash everywhere. <laughs> and there were all these toys everywhere, children's toys. And it was, the grass was all overgrown. And I was like, whoa, like what is going on around here? And all of a sudden I realized, this is all my mind. Wow, this is all just thoughts. What you see is in your mind. Oh my God, I could really see it. I thought, wow, this is like all the past. This is what's been happening in my mind. I've been self-consumed with attack and, you know, guilt and shame. And it was an accumulation of just debris, you know, in my head. In my house. Mm -hmm. And it just shocked me. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, in heaven. Oh, oh my God. I thought, I am going to join with the Holy Spirit now. And I am going to clean my mind. This is all my thoughts. And I'm going to use this to heal my mind. Mm. I'm going to work with you, Holy Spirit. Mm. And I'm going to look at my thoughts now. And I remember because my sister had been murdered at the time and I had this huge picture of her on my mantle and, you know, really seeing, I was just, it was like I was living in this cave of illusion from the past mm. and, oh my God, I remember going in and I looked at my sister on the mantle. It was this huge picture I had because like I never wanted to forget or whatever. And, oh my God, I just felt so much love for her. And then I took the big picture off the mantle and I said, I love you so much and now I'm going to let you go. And I threw it in the trash. And it became my first room. Like I just, like every shelf, everything. It was just like this. It was all memories of the mm. past. Mm. That's beautiful. It was beautiful. And then, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the thing was, is I was, re I felt like I was reading this material that was the most profound material that I was ever reading and I never wanted to forget it. I knew that I needed mind training. Well, I didn't know really that. I just knew I had to stay awake mm. from these thoughts and beliefs. And also, I feel like what was really interesting was how I was addicted to this victim mm. identity. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do feel like that's That's so perfect because this victim identity is running so deep 
you know, it's like the the everyday stories is is nothing but a reflection of this desire to be a victim mm. of the world. Mm. So the story just made up to keep reinforce this this identity. And yet, at the same time, the spirit is offering the solution because mm. I know that you know you 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 left the community for about a period of months, and then you you told me that nothing works for you when you're trying to go against um, the steps that's provided by the spirit. You know, like you can't make anything happen. <laughs> you can't make anything happen. You can't make anything that that's truly like flowing. And yet, one day you were all set to go to California from Pennsylvania. This as last time. Last time, yes. And <clears throat> you get the whole car loaded with stuff. You're ready to. Okay, there's nothing here. Um, in where you were, so you're like nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. I'm going to California. It sounds really good, and you loaded the whole car, and then well, not quite. I was packing up. You I packing. loaded the whole. I didn't load the whole. car. You're not on the way yet, but, but you, I was. That was the, like everything was packing in that direction. Right, and then that day on the road, you said someone cut you off. Yeah, like I was on my mission. You know, like my direction was headed. To California, to this ashram, you know. I thought, okay, I'm going to go meditate and and uh, you know go to California, live on the beach or whatever. Yeah, but I want to say something. You know, it's you know it's interesting because my mind. It's it. Can I talk a little bit about grievances? Yeah, it's very deep because you know we don't realize how you know the lesson grievances hide the light of the world from me. And it was like, I was in this experience where I really, well, even that, like the grievance was there, but it almost like it didn't really, like I felt that I was right. Mm -hmm. And so the, I wasn't even willing to let it go. Let it go. So it didn't really even matter. So this was what's happening in that. Yeah. Even though I studied the course forever. Yeah. You know how deep this victim belief goes if we want to go into that. But, you know, when we have any tiny grievance. Yeah. What it really does is it really puts us in another identity. This self-concept comes back. Yeah. And it's so deep. But doing this mission that I thought that I was on, you know, by myself and, and, um, yeah, I was like determined I was going to California and, uh, yeah. And all of a sudden this car cut me off. And right in front of me, it says, pray now. I even took a picture of this license plate because I really did not know what I was doing for real. I don't know. But I still don't know what I'm doing. I mean, that I have no idea what I'm doing. And I love it. But And so it's like, I, I really did say, help me, God. But it said, pray now. <laughs> and you did. And you, I did. You stopped so the I thought, car. Okay, right. 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 And, then I, and then I went home and I'm like, okay, I got to pray too. I got Like I was getting, I mean, you get on your knees. Because you, you know, so humbling. You don't know the way. Mm -hmm. We need to be shown. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of a sudden I heard, you can't decide upon the curriculum. And it was like shocking to me a bit. And I, like, you know, it's not just, you know, the course isn't about theory. It's about an experience. And really like when Jesus is saying something to us, it is twice removed from reality. I mean, our, you know, it's an experience. And when he, when I heard that, you can't decide upon the curriculum. I realized for sure that I was trying to decide on the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even like, like even that truly believe thing, you know, it was like, I could see, oh, wow, I never actually did believe in God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something mm -hmm. that I could try. Mm -hmm. But when it said that you can't, decide upon the curriculum, I actually saw, wow, that's what I'm actually trying to do here. Mm -hmm. I am trying to decide upon the curriculum. Then I got on my knees and he said, put your car up for sale now. And my car has been this symbol of freedom. And I'm like, oh my word, that's really something. But you know, I feel like it isn't like I really know what I'm doing. So it's like, well, okay, let's see what happens with this. Mm -hmm. So I put it on Craigslist, 
I went and found out how much it's worth, put it on Craigslist. In three hours, it's sold. <laughs> so it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, which is so beautiful, you know, I just feel like this journey is so humbling, you know, this deep not knowing and surrendering and opening up to being shown. And um, I heard to call David. I mean, it was happening. Mm -hmm. Like, what is this Mm -hmm. happening? And then, you know, and David was just as joyful as could be. But, you know, the beautiful thing uh, this time was, you know, I could, I knew it had to be my decision, my decision, Mm -hmm. my decision with God. Mm -hmm. Like, so, and not that it wasn't before. But there was something much, much, much deeper. I wasn't going to just listen and follow. Yeah. You know, David, he wasn't giving me the answers anymore, which is beautiful. It was the most beautiful gift that he, I could cry about that. Because then it was really like wide open into this total emptiness and just totally surrendering everything, you know, and not in form in my mind. Mm. into this I really don't know Mm. and then dropping my whole plan to go to California and saying I'm headed in that direction Mm -hmm. and you know really I feel like these relationships that are given Mm. you know they're not I don't get to decide on them yeah because I know that at the very you know we're jumping the, the timeline quite a bit because after you you had this truly belief and truly fly experience you got the course Mm. and then also you started to really see a lot of the things and you clean your house because that's your mind and then everything started to take on this like a spark because even your career shifted you forgive your father and then the some money come from him to support you started a company that just took off, like, you know, abundant nursing, abundant nursing, you became the CEO, you were, you're living in total abundance, you and I have this inform, inform and have this um, C, as CEO concept as well, because you, you told me that was very healing for you to actually be able to to see that you're worthy of something because mm-hmm. there was deep unworthiness. And that's where you met David for the first time. And you keep joining him um, on travels and retreats and then community. And that was the like the, the very gradual um, opening to truly believe. But, mm-hmm. but like you were saying, along the way, of course, you know, all the thoughts have to be completely put aside to, to for us to be open to the truth. And and then along the way, there are certain things that would come up and you're like, oh, no, not so fast. That you're you're going to be running away. But this time, this is just the last time that you were thinking of going to California and then heard you can't pick your curriculum. And you knew exactly that Yes, my curriculum was laid in front of me and was chosen for me. And this is, I really feel, the time that you said, not only because it is chosen by you, the curriculum, but also I, this is my will too. Mm. And something I I truly feel is that, is that, yeah, your will is my will. I don't fight anymore. Mm. I don't want to fight anymore. Yeah, it's very humbling. Yeah. But it's really beautiful, too. Yeah. And yeah, it's really beautiful because God's plan for us, you know, is much better than we can ever imagine. Mm-hmm. And I just see how humbling, how, you know, the deeper we go, like even that victim belief is very huge, actually was for me Mm -hmm. anyhow it is like the separated state and it goes very it went very very deep for me and you know it's like we don't realize how precious our mind is our mind is like this precious this isn't the brain this is the mind and like how precious you know keeping the slate clean 
is this pure glistening mind of God and the only way to do that is to forgive Mm. and I guess what's humbling is to see like you know just really seeing that you know there are there are no tiny grievances Mm. you know and you know just realizing how this is such a present experience Mm -hmm. a present awareness Mm -hmm. and that any tiny grievance will cut that off Mm. It's almost like it cuts off awareness. Right. And what I experienced was, is, which I didn't know that I was doing it, tiny grievances were growing over the years yeah. that I would just kind of like brush off. I wasn't conscious of it. Yeah. It's like this person is like this, and I'm right about that. Right. And that's, that's as, as sm- small a grievance as it can be. This person is like this. I don't like the way he or she is, but it doesn't matter. Right. And I'm right. I don't need to worry about I don't that. need to worry about that. I, I'm right about that, but I, I don't need to worry about that. But we never really know those kind of things about how we see other people is so detrimental mm. to our own mind. Oh, my word. It's so precious. It's like, you know, and... Well, you can't really see your brother unless you... It's like coming... Like, who am I? You know, know thyself. You know, the, you you really, truthfully, this isn't like, you, there's no speck that you can keep in your, you know, pull the beam out of your own eye. And just that this, uh, yeah, it's, it's like just, I don't know, I guess I feel the preciousness of this holy instant. Yeah. It's like, and, and so it's like... Every thought and belief will have to be questioned. Yeah. And really, in the end, all the thoughts are really about yourself. Yeah. Because I remember this very clearly. When I first came to the monastery, you were um, overseeing the whole volunteers and uh, the monastery. And then there was one person who came to visit or maybe uh, had a short stay and um, at at one lunch very casual and he just basically shared all his grievance about everybody and this person is like this this person is like it was really really harsh and then you just said to him you said oh you're so harsh on yourself Mm. because every every grievance you hold about others is really how you see yourself that's that's the truth it is the truth Yeah, it's just so humbling because, you know, I guess for me this time, I just see, you know, how unconsciously, you know, I was holding those grievances Mm. and then almost like they became like a mound that was building up, Mm. you know, and not thinking that, it, you know, so humbling, you know, that not thinking that it really was a problem. Mm -hmm. And then there felt like there was a big volcano Mm -hmm. that happened and then uh, it's like a split. Yeah. Like you can't see anymore. And then you think you, you, don't, like, you don't like this anymore, but it's really you, you can't live with that state of mind anymore. And that's where the point is like, I need to, I need to get out of this. And, and then, but I just thought how beautiful that the spirit is guiding you so clearly. Because, you know, that when... When you saw the, the the number plate, pray now. You did straight away. You didn't like. I don't have time for this. I'm set out to California. You're like, okay, I'm gonna pray now. And then you heard, I cannot decide upon. You cannot decide upon the curriculum. That is so perfect because our curriculum is forgiveness. Mm. This is what we're set to do: to forgive this whole world, mm. forgive everything that is not. God's truth, Mm. absolutely everything about ourselves, everything about other people. Even Jesus says in the Course, the 365 lessons, the purpose of that is to train your mind so that you will shift your perception about everything and everyone. Mm. And then for us who studies the Course, then we take on this life curriculum of forgiveness because if the curriculum is forgiveness, then the form 
is something that is chosen and given for us. We can't really um, generate the form and decide upon the form to say, this is how I learn forgiveness. We can't, we can't know that. And it is given. Mm-hmm. And for you, after you heard that you can't decide upon the f- curriculum, then you heard to call David. And then, oh no, you, you heard to put the car um, on Craigslist and it got sold in three hours. Mm-hmm. And you can't back out of it. I think you tried. You're like, oh, this is way too fast. Let me call the buyer <laughs> and cancel well, the whole. A friend of mine had said, oh no, back out, back out. You, back know, out. you know, you don't want to go back. Right. So, yeah. So and, I'm like, oh no, you know, what do I do? Then I did join with Dave and it was really beautiful. Because, you know, I guess you know, it's even David or people anymore for me. It mm-hmm. has nothing to do with people. Mm-hmm. It's about this. Uh, joining in purpose. It's about purpose. It's about praying together. It's about, you know, practicing forgiveness together. And mm-hmm. in that uh, commitment, it's so, pra- there's nothing, there is no other purpose but forgiveness in this journey. And to find those around you that, you know, it's like hold on tight. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what's happening, but to go towards that. Yeah. And just knowing that that's, you know, we're just meeting each other anew again. And you know, okay, let's do it. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, and you did try to back off the deal. You you couldn't because you called the buyer. You said, actually, I changed my mind. The buyer was like, what are you talking He's about? Curious. He said, I took out a loan to buy this car and it's already all in process. You can't back out. It's like in three hours, every <laughs> when you said yes to the... Well, then another thing that happened, which was bizarre, this Eric guy, El Faro who just, he would stop in at this retreat center where I was staying like every once in a while, like every three months or something. He calls me too. And he says, Hey, listen, I'm going to be stopping in there. Uh, the day that I need, cause I thought, how am I going to get to the airport? If I sell my car to go to Mexico, to go to Mexico. And I said, you're kidding me. You're coming in. I said, would you want, cause, uh, the guy I live with was up at, uh, you know, this Tara Singh retreat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was there by myself. And I said, would you take me to the notary Mm -hmm. to sell the car and take me to the airport? He goes, I would love to. So it was like all this, it just all just shifted in just this miraculous. I I actually have to say, this is all that I know. You know, it's just what the Holy Spirit says. You know, the right use of judgment is pay attention to how you feel. Mm -hmm. And actually the instant that I made that decision, it was like I was back in the cream again. Mm. I was back in the flow. Mm. Like I wasn't taking a thought for it. It was like the next thing was showing up. The next Mm. thing was showing up. I mean, even I had all this luggage. I went to this hotel. They gave, there was, you know, those trolleys they give you to put your luggage on. They only had one at the hotel. And the lady said, just take it into your room. Mm. You don't even need to unload it. Like every single and I have to say truthfully, it has been that way every moment. It's mm-hmm. like it's pulled me into such a presence, mm-hmm. such a deliciousness of mm-hmm. just being so present that my life isn't my own mm-hmm. and that I'm not even interested in the mm-hmm. life of Lisa. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in this, you know, I'm, I feel present with God, like, now we are one mm-hmm. with him who is my source. Like this is the most valuable awareness, mm-hmm. you know, to be able, you know, and then I arrived here in Mexico, you know, and just kind of landed and really kind of almost like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, you know, I just landed again, really not knowing what I was walking into and everything had shifted and changed here, which was very disorienting, but so good. Mm-hmm. Because I remember thinking, wow, Lisa isn't here anymore. Mm-hmm. This is bizarre. This is all gone. Yeah. It all re you know, all, yeah. It was, it was all like reconfigured. Yeah. I, I love it. Like, even from the very beginning, when you had those mystical experiences, and every single time when you say yes to his plan, everything shifts in your perception. Mm. You know, suddenly everything started to spark. Everything started to flow. Oh. Everything started to just just basically oh. take care. Oh, if I, if, listen, it's almost like, for me, I guess, I don't know why, the contrast is really good. <laughs> you know, Jesus works with, you know, spirit works with contrast. For mm-hmm. me, it's like, 
a total contrast of experience from, you know, making the decision. Pushing. Yeah, pushing, because I left with a grievance mm -hmm. in my mind, which I thought I was right. Mm -hmm. And I can really feel that, you know, when you believe that you're right, you really believe you're a victim mm -hmm. of this world. Mm -hmm. And it isn't even people or communities or whatever. This is between you and God. You are holding a grievance against God, you know, that, you know, not in agreement you're not forgiving, actually, is what right. you're not doing. You're not forgiving and justifying it with holding on to the error in the mind. And and so, you know, when the forgiveness, like to truly, I feel like what I really, what it is, is a willingness to be wrong about everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was when I heard the pray now. Mm -hmm. You can't decide upon the curriculum. Mm -hmm. You know, it was this arrogance that I felt that I was right and I'm going to, you know, like a pride of I'm going to go do it my way. Yeah. But really having nowhere to go. Yeah. But I get excited because what's so exciting <clears throat> for real is that like in the incident, it was like a whole nother, like in, in the forgiveness, it was like a whole nother, mm -hmm. you know, dimension opened up that happened in an instant and almost like I just have been walking in the presence of God with God opening up with not a plan not an agenda just in a presence to watch and observe everything appearing in front of me and how wonderful it is like I feel like grievances I can oh it's so precious grievances hide the light of the world for me mm -hmm. and the light is knowing that we're one with God and our source. It's not about, and so then it's like you can't, it's about abiding mm -hmm. in this presence and then watching it's how the kingdom of heaven is added unto thee. But it's not in form, it's not with people, it's not with communities. It's whatever is going to help and support me to remember this presence. Yeah. That's that's so beautiful because in the end we all have to come to this place to say, I say yes to your plan, and I want to, I want to um, truly feel that is my plan too. Mm -hmm. And then when we have this real recognition, then we realize, oh, okay, hi, hi there. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 both said yes. We. Or we all said yes, and here we are. And it was not because of anything else. It was not because of a person. It was not because of any preconceived plan in our own mind. It was just because we said yes, and we found each other to to hold the same purpose. And then we really use each other's re like relationship for this forgiveness on a daily basis. Mm. This is what we're here to forgive. We forgive absolutely everything. And trust together that the curriculum, the form of the forgiveness is given. It's totally given. And we're here together to receive and say yes to it. You know, that is tabula rasa. Mm. That is truly mm. how life can be lived. And I just love Love it because it feels absolutely true when we say yes to to his plan on a daily basis. Well, every moment. You know? On a momentary basis. It does feel like, oh my God, I, I need to just like slide down the, the water slide mm. because it, it happens really fast. It happens without our own effort. Everything flows. Everything takes care of itself. That's just really beautiful. And I actually just remembered, you know, this morning that I remembered years ago, eight years ago, um, I was in Australia and I was doing a three-week silent retreat. I was facilitating the silent retreat. And it was so beautiful because everything I received, uh, like a lot of the instructions before the retreat, how to how to um, guide everything and the, the structure of the day, just loose structure, and everything is in the silence. So even the people who would cook the meals, all the recipes are, um, you know, like printed out and stick on the wall. So nobody needs to talk to anybody, even if you're cooking together. So everything was, was laid out and no computer is used, no phone is used. And then the day before the retreat started, my computer went out. 
It was a brand new computer, two months old. It, it totally went out. I took it to the shop. The shop said, "Pick it up in three weeks. This is when it will be ready." It was the day after the retreat, so it was like everything was planned. Even my own, I have to surrender my own computer. But the beautiful thing was, was that the people who came to the silent retreat because they couldn't talk to each other, they don't know. What everybody was going through, they only know what they were going through on a daily basis.、So、they come here to talk with me on a one-on-one -on -one expressions, and I found out that everybody on a daily basis were having the exact same thoughts.、Mm -hmm. They all think is their own thoughts, and there is their own problem that they have to deal with. They have to find a solution for. But it was so amazing to watch that every single day the same thought rise up in everybody's mind to be forgiven.、Mm. So the curriculum was given every day. This is what is rising up. This is the kind of things we're looking at today. This is then everything was orchestrated based on that. But it was. I was the same. Like I surrendered. I have to surrender my computer. I have to. Join in the silence, in the deep listening, and witness. Oh my God! It's not even everybody's individual thoughts and individual forgiveness、mm. lessons. It's people are selected、mm. to be together、mm. to witness this same forgiveness curriculum that everybody is part of,、mm. and then everything sparks because you know, in for simplicity and because of the silence. Every morning we have porridge or oatmeal. That was the that was the breakfast every day for three weeks, no variation. But it tastes so amazingly good every day. And at the end, the participants were commenting. They said, "We knew we came for a silent retreat. We didn't know we came for a five star gourmet <laughs> retreat." And I was like, "What are you guys talking about?" It was so simple, but it was true. Everything tastes so good.、Mm. Everything looks so amazing. Everything was sparkling、mm. because we we receive the curriculum、mm. on a moment to moment basis, on a day to day basis.、Mm. We let forgiveness be done、mm. to our shy one shared mind,、mm. and that was the first experience I had. Of course, in a, a group like a retreat setting. But then, you and I and some of our friends, we 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 held a mystery school in 2017, the Tabula Rasa Mystery School, and that was the exact same,、um, the same guidance that every retreat, every day, there there is a curriculum, and the curriculum is not chosen by anybody. The curriculum was arranged by the Holy Spirit, and we are here together for deep listening together. And even the participants and the teachers were all chosen by the Spirit.、Mm -hmm. The Spirit picked the group,、mm -hmm. saying, "This is where the collaborative、um, healing is going to happen. Is among this group." And the curriculum was unfolding in front of us, actually, a, on a daily basis. That's why it's every day was just so brand new,、mm -hmm. and the healing we witnessed was so miraculous、mm. because nobody even know that this need to happen.、Mm. And then that's why I was thinking after after we did one in twenty seventeen and another one in twenty eighteen, we did a pause, but because this is what. Our curriculum it is for our life.、Mm. This is our joint prayer that we give this day to the Spirit. We pray now,、right. <laughs> and we accept that we can't decide upon the curriculum.、Mm. So we just come together for inner listening and say yes.、Mm. And that's why now even this new.、Um, Tabula Rasa Mystery School idea comes back to our mind, and 
we're all sitting here to think, wow, this this could happen, whether it happens or not. But this is what we're living、mm. anyways.、Mm. This is what we're we're opening to on a daily basis, anyways.、Mm. It's exciting. Yeah, I feel very excited about it because you know it's not like a ritual, like we're going to repeat Chapel Ross or Mystery School every year. Like it's not what it's about. It's about this living presence and this unknownness, which is terrifying to the ego. Oh, but it's so delicious and joyful to the spirit. It's so vibrant and alive, and like you said, we're we're already living in it,、mm-hmm. and so it's like and and like it's just. Appearing like that idea, Tabla Rasa Mystery School just appeared in this now. It's like, oh, that's a wonderful idea. You know, and ideas leave not their source. So it's like, and we're all, and like it's almost like everybody feels the spark in it in、mm-hmm. our mind.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so now it's like,、oh, okay, that's what's happening, which is wonderful because like Mexico has been co living down here,、mm-hmm. you know, and this property is kind of amazing. You see that the spirit. When I walk around, it's like, oh my word! You know, like how glorious the plan is. This property is so mystical. Actually, it's it, it's you know, it, just kind of like the monastery has its feel out there in the canyon. This has like the birds and like tropical trees and flowers, and the weather is always warm. But just it feels like a cocoon. Yeah. That that has already been set up that we're walking into. Yeah, like it's unfolding in front of us. There's no pre- preconceived ideas, which is so exciting because、yeah. you know even us just talking about it right now. I mean, it just came in a couple days ago,、mm-hmm. and the minute it has come in, you can just see almost like、uh, it's created this vibrancy. Yes, in the mind, and also you know just this thing of knowing that the script is written. And that it's all destiny. Yeah. So exciting because when you know it really is all destiny, and the tabula rasa is that empty state. It's like、oh, it makes you so present with what's happening. Yeah. It's oh my, you know that there, it isn't our plan. It's his plan, but it is our will too with his. Yeah. Yeah, we're collaborating. Because, yeah. Because because we're open. We're、mm. open to receive,、mm. and I think. You know, with the mystery school, is the same. Like everybody really is coming together to receive together,、mm. and we have a collaborative relationship. That's why we are together. We find each other in this very given time, in this very given space, because there is a collaborative assignment that we're given by the spirit、mm. that we're saying yes to. Even though we have never met each other probably before the the school started, regardless, we're we're chosen to. To participate、mm. and allow his plan to unfold and to 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 be carried through us,、mm. you know, so that that feels such a holy purpose, but also so easy and effortless.、Mm. We're we're not trying to get anything. It's like it's like an experiment, like quantum physics.、Mm-hmm. You know, almost like we feel the spark. And let's watch and see what happens without any expectation.、Mm-hmm. And then what I love about it is is to watch to see who shows up,、mm-hmm. who also feels that spark. Because、mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you'll feel the spark. Yeah. And and then it's like, oh, you felt the spark too.、Yeah. Okay. Then like we're supposed to be together. Yeah. You know, and like what's so precious about it too, like the experiment is, is there's no one leading.、Mm-hmm. There's no personal leadership. It really is the prayer. Uh, of the Holy Spirit, that's what's so divine about these mystery schools is that it really there is no curriculum in time.、Mm-hmm. You know, that's not a future、yeah. agenda. It's all of us really coming into this curriculum of the Holy Instant、yeah. of being together and feeling that oh, you know, clarity、mm-hmm. and and that it's such a willingness to trust God and it's really practical application. Like it, it will flush up things for people, but it's it's our putting our trust in God. Yeah, and and this is our、um, walk of trust to say, you know, can we really live live like that? And yes, we can. Yeah, we can just live in such a way. We just follow the spark in our heart, and we、we'll、keep following. We、we'll、keep following, and the more we follow, the spark grows.、Mm. 
and it becomes like a, not just a personal spark, it becomes it encompass everything. Then we just keep saying yes, and everything started to fade in our awareness. It was a state of mind. Yeah. You know, I really see that that's really all that it is. It's not about form. It's about, you know, um, feeling this union with God. Mm -hmm. And you can really get out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, me and my father are one. It's just what Jesus spoke, mm -hmm. you know, 2,000 years ago. It is not me that do these things, but my father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Because you really know that you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And that you want to totally open up to this glorious, holy instant and mm -hmm. be done through mm -hmm. for you to be in that experience of that union. Mm -hmm. Like that's the most valuable thing. There's nothing else valuable here is to remember that we're one with God and, and we're two or more gathered. There I am. And, you know, and, and so it's like the circle of atonement yeah. is naturally happening, not anybody organizing anything, all of us coming together in that defenseless, yeah. open awareness yeah because we all just want to know that there is a, mm. a much bigger plan oh and very loving mm. and it's already done mm. that's that's what our joint prayer is to come together to see that the most beautiful glorious and <gasps> loving plan is already done mm. is fulfilled yeah and it isn't even you know it's not in time it's already here it's right here. It's not somewhere else. Yeah. You're not going to get something. You are, it's already, it's opening up to what's already present. Yeah. It's this holy instant, you know, and let, we're stepping back and letting him lead the way in this light. And like the light is revealing, you know, the glory, you know, his mass majesty is being revealed in front of us, but it's not, it's a state of mind. It's the release of that separate self, the fear and the guilt and the shame and the unworthiness and coming in to our true identity, you know, and, and fully accepting our holiness. And, and, and from that holy state, you know, and, and, and what's beautiful about it is, is that I know that when we come together, this is what so what my own experience is, is that obstacles may show up. Be humble. You don't know what actually is in your mind that needs to be healed. All glory to God, because what happens is it naturally shows up. That's why don't ever say, I'm over that. You just stay present. Oh, then, then an obstacle might come up. But our job is really just to be willing. He says it's not that you don't have any thoughts that are pure, but is that you would have none that you would keep. And so I guess from my own experience, I see that more that we're just in this present moment and letting go of those obstacles to the awareness of love's presence, it continues to expand this experience because you can't be thrust into heaven. So it's so like, so you, you just, you're not, you're not trying to create another concept who is so meaningless. It like has no value. You find out what's truly valuable is this present awareness that just keeps like the mind of God expands forever and we're part of that mind of God. And when you truly surrender to his will, which is your will, which is the freedom, mm -hmm. it kind of like takes you. Mm -hmm. And then you want, don't want to hold on to any obstacle. Mm -hmm. It's like your throat floating through outer space in some way, which is a, you know, it's like you're kind of opening up into this majesty, mm -hmm. you know, but it's always just right here. It's not, it's right, it's in this moment. But there is a glory and a power because we are all part of God. And so when we're coming together with that purpose, mm -hmm. just to remember God and remember our holiness, it makes you want to cry, our perfection. Mm -hmm. Like that's our commitment is to love, mm -hmm. to open up to the love that we are. We are like bursting stars together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a a waterfall of stars, you know, connected to God and, and being in that dance of life that is natural. We don't need to do anything anymore. All we have to do is remember, you know, and it's such a precious thing to remember who we are. There is nothing else to remember. And then we remember it through each other. And whatever isn't that needs to be forgiven. And, and then you're in such gratitude 
it's like, you know, so you just want to stay in that. You know, like, you don't want no spot in there. That's just what I, I see for myself. I don't want nothing in the way. And, and you know, just just watching yeah. every moment. We truly just trust so much that we come together and let forgiveness be done for us. So, yeah, I, I think this is a perfect wrap-up for this episode. I just... I feel so grateful, Lisa, for you being here and for sh- for following the spirit's um, guidance in your mind, and that is a truly a blessing to to absolutely everyone. So thank you for being with me, and thank you for being with me today. Thank you, Francis. Mm, thank you, everyone, for joining Lisa and I. I hope to see you again. Bye.